Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and many of you have asked me, should I upgrade from my iPhone 15 pro max to the iPhone 16 pro max, or maybe just upgrade to the iPhone 15 pro max. So I wanted to walk you through all of the changes between both versions and help you decide which would be best for you. Now, just like every year, Apple has actually discontinued the iPhone 15 Pro Max on the Apple Store. It's no longer sold by Apple, but it is sold in different places around the world, but they've replaced it with the iPhone 16 Pro Max. We have the same prices this year, and we have a little bit different color choice this year. So Apple actually kept the natural titanium, black and white, but they got rid of the blue titanium and replaced it with a new desert titanium. So we have that new color, and they've also kept the overall frame the same in the sense that it's titanium. So we have titanium around the outside edge, and we also have Apple's ceramic shield on both displays. However, with the iPhone 16 Pro Max, it has the latest generation of ceramic shield on the front, which they say is tougher than any smartphone glass. So we'll have to wait and see over a period of using it for about a year to see if that holds up. Dimension wise, the iPhone 16 Pro Max is slightly larger. It's slightly taller and ever so slightly wider. There's a slight change there. And also with that increased size, it comes an increased weight that goes along with that. So we have 7.81 ounces or 221 grams with the 15 Pro Max or 7.99 ounces or 227 grams with the 16 Pro Max. So not only do we have a slightly larger iPhone in display this year, but we also have the new camera control button we'll talk about a little bit later. But it's a button there that's also provides haptic feedback and is capacitive and replaces the same spot where we had the millimeter wave antenna before. It looks like they've integrated that into the frame of the phone this year. So in general, it looks very much the same same, but the actual camera control is where it's a little bit different and how you can tell the difference. Otherwise, side by side, it's very hard to tell the difference between both phones. With that increased size, we gain increased displays as well. The 15 Pro Max has a 6.7 inch display, 2796 by 1290 at 460 pixels per inch. The 16 Pro Max is now 6.9 inches at 2868 by 1320, again at 460 pixels per inch. Other than that, though, they're the same as far as overall brightness. They both have 120 hertz pro motion. They have always on displays and they also go down to one nit of brightness on the 16 Pro Max. So we have basically the same displays and a slightly larger size. However, with that slightly larger size, we gain a larger battery. With the 15 Pro Max last year, we have a 4,441 milliamp hour battery. And with the 16 Pro Max, we have 4,685 milliamp hours. According to Apple, this is about a four hour difference with regular video playback. However, in real world use, I find it to be a couple of hours. And with the 15 Pro Max, you'll see I had three hours and 31 minutes of screen active time, four hours and 42 minutes of screen idle time. And I went through 100% of my battery. Now, keep in mind, I do run a lot of betas, but this is on the same version. With the 16 Pro Max, I have four hours and 17 minutes of screen active time, five hours and 17 minutes of screen idle time, and I've only used about 75% of my battery. So I'm getting about two hours, sometimes three hours more with the same sort of usage. So overall, it's getting me through the day. It seems to be a big upgrade when you're going from the 15 Pro Max to the 16 Pro Max as far as battery. Now this year, we do get an upgrade with the overall charging. Apple does support Qi 2 wireless compatibility on both devices. However, this year with the iPhone 16 Pro Max, if you buy Apple's specific MagSafe charger, you have to have the one with the braided cable that's slightly thinner. You can charge up to 25 watts. However, it's only with that specific cable and their own 30 watt adapter. Unfortunately, they haven't brought that for anything else and there was no 45 watt charging as many suspected. However, if you want to keep your devices charged, today's sponsor ESR has you covered. The ESR Qi 2 MagSafe battery pack is ultra compact and is also only 15.5 millimeters thick, making it 38% slimmer than competitors. With its built-in sensors and AI, it maintains a constant temperature below 99.14 degrees Fahrenheit, and it can charge at 15 watts, which charges up to 84% in 2 hours and 25 minutes. It also features a metal built-in kickstand that allows you to view your iPhone in portrait mode 
or landscape mode as well. For charging at home, ESR has the three in one MagSafe charger with G2 and cryo boost. It's the fastest 15 watt MagSafe charger, bringing your phone to a full charge in two hours and 30 minutes, which is less than other brands. ESR's patented cryo boost cooling tech keeps your phone cool to charge faster for longer. And it also features an Apple certified fast Apple watch charger as well. ESR also has a car charger with the same cooling and a strong magnetic grip for your car. And all of them come in at an affordable price. Be sure to check out the latest chargers from ESR in the link in the description below. Overall speed of both phones is pretty similar with day to day use. However, if we take a look at benchmarks here, or Geekbench, we have the new A18 Pro with eight gigs of RAM, the same as before, but with a slightly higher clock speed. However, if we go into our CPU benchmark, take a look at the history, we have a significant gain on the 16 Pro Max. We've jumped up about 500 points for single core and over a thousand for multi-core. Now, I think most of this will come into play when we're actually using the neural engine for Apple intelligence, but if maybe we're just opening something simple like music, you're going to see similar results. It's going to take a moment to load. If you're scrolling through, it's going to be the same. If maybe you go over to the next screen and you want to go into maybe the app store doing day to day tasks, you're really not going to notice much of a difference. In fact, you'll see the 16 pro max is taking longer to load the same thing. Mostly that's just due to the overall internet connection that it has. However, if you're doing more intensive tasks, so maybe if we go into a game, we'll go ahead and just load something simple like Minecraft here. We're already in on the 16 pro max. Let's go ahead and press play, press create new, create new world again, create, and you'll see it start to create the world. And this will give you an idea as far as overall speed between both of them, since we're doing the exact same task. Now the 16 pro max doing something simple like this should be a little bit faster, but I would not expect a gigantic leap in time. However, we may see that in our future test here in just a moment. So you'll see we're already in everything's smooth. Everything's drawn as far as draw distance. We just have to walk a little bit and it's as smooth as you could expect. So that was nice and fast. Maybe if we go into something else here, if we go into maybe iMovie, now we have iMovie. Let me bring in the iPhone 11. I'm using that ESR battery pack here, the MagSafe battery pack, just to charge this, even though it doesn't have MagSafe. And let's go ahead and see how long it takes to export either of these. So we'll go ahead and tap done. Both are set to 4K and we'll go ahead and save the video. So we'll go ahead and hit start. And there we go. Let's see how long this takes. In theory, the 16 Pro Max should be definitely quite a bit faster this time around. So it does appear to be quicker. Let's see how much longer this takes. And there was quite a big difference from about one minute and 27 seconds on the 16 pro max to two minutes and 24 seconds on the 15 pro max. I didn't think we'd see that big of a difference, but also let's take a look at the thermals now that we've sort of done something a little more intensive and the phone feels definitely a little bit cooler with the 16 pro max. So let me attach the thermal camera here. You can see the overall thermal signature is different on both of them. If we take a look at the back of this here, we're at about 33 degrees Celsius at the hottest point. And then on the 15 pro max, we're at about, well, 33.7 degrees Celsius or so. So a little bit warmer, not a huge difference, but there's definitely a difference between both of them. However, using these regularly, I've noticed a huge difference with overall heat. I've found that the display on the 16 pro max does not pull itself back from brightness with regular use. So if you're using this throughout the day, it can sort of dissipate heat a little bit better. It seems to get rid of it better, especially when doing very intensive tasks, such as playing games and more. When it comes to the overall connectivity, well, I recently had a chance to try this out. We had a hurricane come through the area I live in near Charlotte, North Carolina, and thankfully my family and everyone else was fine, but there's still a lot of people that are in need. But during that time, I actually completely lost cell service, Wi-Fi service, and had the option for SOS. So emergency satellite via SOS worked just fine. However, I was thankfully able to drive the next town over and get signal. And I found that with the 16 Pro Max, I had about one extra bar of signal in the same area with additional speed increases as well. I saw 1000 down by 100 up and I actually used that to upload videos when I didn't have power. So this was great. It seems to remain connected and I've had better Wi-Fi with it as well with Wi-Fi seven. So we do have those differences. Wi-Fi seven, the same Bluetooth though. 
When it comes to the cameras though, that's a big concern for a lot of people. The forward facing camera is very similar, 12 megapixels, but the rear cameras have an upgrade this year. Now with the rear cameras this year, we have a big difference. With the iPhone 15 Pro Max, we have a 48 megapixel f 1.78 wide, an ultra wide 12 megapixel f 2.2, and a telephoto 12 megapixel f 2.8 with a five times optical zoom. With the 16 Pro Max, we have a new 48 megapixel sensor, which Apple is calling the Fusion Camera F1.78. We have a new 48 megapixel ultra wide F2.2, and the telephoto is the same at 12 megapixels F2.8. We now have spatial photos on both but we have a new tone option on the 16 Pro Max. And with the 16 Pro Max this year, we have styles that we can apply. We can go in and edit the photo, then let's go ahead and expand this, and we can control the style of the photo after the fact or set this style as default in the camera settings. So we can completely change this however we'd like this year. So we could go through, maybe change the color tone, bring back some of the shadows, or contrast, or whatever you'd like. Give it an amber hue, and you can go through and adjust this however you'd like. We also have 4K 120 this year, as far as the video recording capability, again, that we can change after the fact. Now, when I was recording the iPhone 16 Pro Max review, this is one of the videos I used. If we go into edit here, we can go to this little option in the upper right and then select a playback speed. 120 frames per second is one of the options at 4K, full quality, and the phone won't overheat. You can select 24, 30, 60, or 120 if you record it at that level. Also, macro photography is great on this, and it's a big jump up from the 15 Pro Max as far as the camera. Of course, we have the new camera control button, and this is something that I think will be helpful for some people. Press the button once, it opens up the camera. Press it again, take a photo. If you're in your video settings, press it once, it will take the photo or video. Again, if we go back into photos, if we press and hold a little bit, we have an option for whatever we've selected before. We can zoom back and forth, double press, and we can switch between different options such as depth or exposure. Now, I don't know how much better this will be than using the on-screen keys. I prefer the on-screen buttons and keys here, but if we go through swiping this way, you can do that. I find that when I try to take a photo with it, they turn out a little bit blurry. And I also cover the actual phone itself while I'm trying to hold it due to the awkward placement of the button. That's my take on it. I find it much better just to press the on-screen control. Now this is supposedly going to get an upgrade in the future where we can half press it to sort of focus and then press again. That may change things, but that update isn't out yet, at least at the time of this video. So I think the camera itself between both of them is a big upgrade this year, especially for macro photography and video. We also have studio audio options with a four mic array. We can switch between all of them and they're very impressive. So let's go ahead and take a full look at what they're capable of with a comparison. These are the forward facing cameras of the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Now the cameras themselves are basically the same. However, this year we actually have a difference with the overall audio. We can adjust the audio on the 16 Pro Max after the fact as we have four different distinct microphones. So we have the standard audio that you're hearing right now. And then we also have a new in-frame audio option. So that's something that's a little bit different. We also have a studio option. So that's what you're hearing right now, which 
which sort of makes me sound like I'm in a studio, and then you have a cinematic audio option that basically adds in some ambient sound. So as I'm walking through the woods, there's some wind blowing, and this just gives you an idea of what it sounds like between both of the cameras. So the 15 Pro Max has always been pretty good, but now we have additional options with the 16 Pro Max. Both have the same IP rating this year, IP68, 6 meters for up to 30 minutes, and many have asked, are the speakers any louder on the new phone? So let's go ahead and take a listen to some royalty-free music and see how they compare. First is the 15 Pro Max. Then the 16 Pro Max. So in that test, they basically sound absolutely identical, and we actually had one decibel less on the 16 Pro Max, at least from this test. But to my ears, they sound very much the same, and we have similar sound quality coming out of both of them. So I don't know that they've upgraded that or changed that at all this year at all. Now, if you're wondering if you should upgrade from the iPhone 15 Pro Max to the iPhone 16 Pro Max, well, that really comes down to a few factors. Does battery matter most to you, or do you care about the camera? If you care about those two things, well, it's a significant an upgrade. Speed-wise is hard to tell as we're still waiting for Apple intelligence, but I would expect that to help dramatically as well. We've also seen the speed difference with exporting and loading games and things seem to be faster. So the overall processor is definitely faster. And of course, if you want future compatibility with things, I would definitely go for the 16 Pro Max. The larger display is nice, but the bezels technically are thinner, but it's hard to really notice. Most people won't notice that, especially with a case on their phone. And in general, the upgrades are fairly minor this year if you don't care about battery or the camera. Other than that, it feels like a very familiar experience and the overall feel of the phone is very familiar as well. So hopefully that helps you decide which one you're going to keep or upgrade to. Let me know if you have a 15 Pro Max and plan to upgrade, or maybe you're waiting for the iPhone 17. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>